Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to finish the mount for this uh, quarter inch die grinder, electric die grinder that we're going to use for a uh, tool post grinder on the lathe. As I mentioned in the previous video this is not something that I anticipate using every day uh, or even once a week or once a month. It'll probably be more likely about once or twice a year. Uh, I've got some very center punches that need to point to be redefined on and also got some uh, dead centers that the same thing needs to point redefined. And probably again probably once or twice a year is all I ever need to do that. In last week's video we got the mount to this point. What we need to do now is a, a dovetail on this that will mount on the quick change tool post. Let me bring you in a little closer. Okay, if you recall in the previous video when I made this bridge plate right here, por portion of the mount, I drilled a couple holes in that and then drilled and tapped a couple corresponding holes in this one inch by one inch block. And I said what we'd do is mount that on there or cut a dovetail into this and mount it onto that that would go directly on the quick change tool post. A simpler means if you don't want to cut a tool post, if you don't want to cut a uh, dovetail, would be to simply take a piece of stock that matches your tool holders, cut it to length, drill and tap it to mount on there, and then it will simply go in there. Uh, that's just not enough fun and that's what this little hobby shop is about is having some fun so what we're going to do <coughs> excuse me what we're going to do is take this again one inch by one inch block lay out a dovetail on it and cut that dovetail with one of our Randy Richard in the shop uh, dovetail cutters now the first thing we want to do I want to take a uh, tool post holder that fits really good. Uh, this is a good fit. As a matter of fact, it's the one I mount on my tool post, quick change tool post holder uh, to do facing on uh, work pieces. I know it fits that side of the uh, uh, quick change tool post real good, so we're going to take some measurements on that. The first measurement we're going to take is across the, uh, the top of the dovetail, <clears throat> the short points on the dovetail. That, <clears throat> that is 1.388. I've measured across various uh, tool holders that I've got, and that will vary uh, anywhere from four to six thousandths uh, various between those. But remember, a human hair is about four thousandths, four to five thousandths, so that's not much difference. The second thing we want to do is measure the depth. Now in these uh, tool holders, at least the ones I've got, there's a little bit of relief right in the center, but we want to measure to this edge over here, which is the high edge. So we'll take our depth micrometer point three eight four and finally the most critical measurement is between these deep parts of the dovetail. Now it would be tempting to take your calipers and just slide them in in there but you're not going to get a good measurement. Reason being, we know on calipers, they've got like scissor uh, grinds on these, on these points down here. So one of them is going to sit flat in the V. This one will sit flat in that dovetail. This one will not. The most accurate way to measure your space between the cuts in a dovetail is to take a couple pins. Now these happen to be a 
249 and a 250 thousandths gauge pins. They do not, it doesn't have to be uh, gauge pins and they don't have to be the exact same size. It's good if they're close to the same size, but they don't have to be the exact same size. As a matter of fact, you could use a couple dowel pins uh, from anything. I like to salvage uh, old, uh, rollers and pins out of printers, fax machines, and those kind of things. So those, those would be perfectly fine as well. They need to be round, and they need to be similar, but most importantly, they need to fit up in that cut, that dovetail cut. So you place them in there, then you take a, an adjustable parallel, being sure everything's seated up in, tighten that adjustable parallel down, and then work it out. Measure that, 1.015. All right, now we've got those measurements. We can go to the milling machine and mill this out. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do, though, is lay out some from the center of this block the width that we measured across here. I'll take an end mill and mill down the depth uh, within the short distance. Then from there, we'll center up again and start milling out the dovetail. Alright, I measured the full length of the block that we had cut before, uh, in the previous video. That's 2.17 long. The distance we measured, the short distance between these points was 1.388. So 2.17 minus 1.388 is 0.782. If we divide that by two, we come out with 0 0.391 from, that we'll lay out from each end. I had 0 0.91, 0 0.391. And just for a sanity check, that should be 1.388 in between. And that looks good. Of course, we'll we'll check that. Uh, we'll mill close to that line and then do some checking over on the milling machine. Here on the mill vise, I've got a work stop mounted on here. At some point, we're probably going to want to take this off and test fit it on the uh, on the tool post, quick change tool post. And if we have to bring it back, I'd like to bring it back to this. To the exact same spot. So we'll put our workpiece in. Alright, let's find the center now on the X axis. All I did there, of course, was touch off on one end, zeroed out the DRO on the x-axis, moved to the other end, zero, or moved to the other end, touched off again, and then divided that, uh, that value in half, which put us in the center. Alright, now I'm going to touch off on the z-axis. We're in the center. I'll touch off on the z-axis, zero out the z-axis DRO up here. Start working that center line until we mill down to 384 thousandths. And then I'll work each side, or I'll work one side at a time until I get close to that line, making a note of the DRO reading of how far we go on one side, and then go that exact same amount on the other side, take a measurement and see where we are.
Okay, that's not quite to the line, uh, but it's at a good nominal value on the DRO. I've stepped over 450 thousandths. So now we'll go back over to do 450 on the other side. Okay, that measured 1.270 and our target was 1.388. Difference is 118 thousandths divided by two is 59 thousandths that we needed to get we need to get off of each side. Now we stopped the DRO at 450 plus the 59 thousandths is 204. Four hundred fifty thousandths plus the fifty nine thousandths is five oh nine. And that looks like it's right on our mark. All right, I'm going to get the uh, dovetail cutter in there, and you may be able, I'm not sure if you can tell from the uh, angle of the camera now. But that dovetail is going to come into those screw holes a little bit. That's perfectly fine. I knew that when I drilled them all the way through. Uh, but that, that will be perfectly fine as long as we clean out that V, v groove good. I'll bring you right back. Okay, for looks, we want this dovetail in the center of this workpiece, which I'm sure it is as good as I can get it anyhow. But what's more important than the dovetail being in the center of the workpiece is that we start from the center of the slot here cutting our dovetails so that each of the V's cut in is absolutely the same depth from the center of the slot not necessarily the workpiece. So what I did was simply uh, recheck center not from the outside of the workpiece, but from the inside of the uh, slot we just cut. Uh, reset zero there. Now what we're going to be using is the smaller of uh, the Randy Richard dovetails, dovetail cutters. You know, come to think of it, I'm not sure I've ever used a larger one. So we'll mount that in our collet. We'll come back to that center that I just found on the DRO. Alright, now we want to find the bottom here. And Randy says you need plenty of RPM when you're using these dovetail cutters. So I'm going to up that from about 600 that we were milling at <clears throat> to 1120. And we're just going to touch here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I zeroed out the DRO again, the Z axis DRO. Now, let's move over to where we're Z or X axis is zeroed out. Let's move over to where we're just touching here. All right, now our depth is locked in place. All right, right quickly. All right, what I'm, what I'm doing is coming off of center. The value is not, doesn't really mean anything because that's dictated by the width of the dovetail cutter down here at, at its base. But I want to come the same amount on each side of zero. So I'm going to take each one at a nominal value. I'm at 250 now. And we'll, we'll make a pass. Now I'll come to that same reading on the other side. 
Now we'll add some to that. That was 250. I'm going to try 50 thousandths at the time and, and come over to 300 on the DRO. Same thing on the other side. All right, I think we're close enough now to get a measurement with our pins. Want to be sure there's no swarf up in there. And clean up any little burrs that might, that might affect our uh, pin measurement. Get my little triangle file. Yeah, that come to a little piece of swarf stuck up in there. All right, we'll take our pins now. And remember, I said these pins, the size of them wasn't all that critical. What's critical here is that you use the same pins to measure this with that you did to uh, uh, get your initial measurement. Let's see if I can get out far enough coming close back there, so I'm going to come out to the end. Alright, with the pins in the bottom of the, the V's, we'll tighten down the adjustable parallel. Now go back to the bench and measure this. Alright, remember I said there was a, a little bit of relief in the middle? Well, that relief is about ten thousandths. So what we're going to do is on the z-axis here, come down 10 more thousandths and we'll make a, a single pass through the middle just to give a little bit of relief here. That relief will be the width of the dovetail cutter of course. Alright, I'm going to pull it out now. I think maybe you can see that little bit of relief there, but I'm going to pull it out, deburr it so it's clean, test it on the, uh, on the tool post, quick change tool post. If I need to do anything to it, remember I got this stop here. All right, let's see how close we are before we actually do a test. I'm using the same pins that I used to get our, our benchmark with this uh, tool holder. And our benchmark was 1.015. And if my calculations were correct, 1.015 and a half, if you can see that. 1.014 and a half uh, with this set of calipers. So it's within one thousandth of what we set as our benchmark. Let's, before we mount this onto here, let's turn it over to the lathe now and see if it does fit. All right, let's try it like this. That locks good. Very good fit. All right, let's turn it over. The vise is trying with the mill, so this shouldn't make a difference. All right, still got a quarter turn of tightening up here on the handle as well, but it's not needed at all. Very good fitting dovetail. I'm going to mount this on the, uh, on the onto this piece, get everything set up, and we'll make some test grinds. Okay, I think we're ready to try out the uh, tool post grinder now. I've got you back in the overhead position, uh, camera position now, so that maybe you can see what I'm going to be doing over here and also what's happening uh, between the stone and the workpiece. Now I'm going to start out, uh, I want to cover my ways of course and several folks have commented that something like a towel, uh, the fine dust will still get through it. 
So I'm going to put a, a piece of plastic down. Then I'll put the towel in place. I found an old white hand towel here that hopefully will help you. Uh, will be enough contrast that you can see what's going on. Now I've got the compound set at 45 degree angle. First thing I'm going to do is a couple of punches uh, here in the chuck. I'm going to start with this one. It's got a pretty good grind on it already, but it's got a good flat surface that I can get everything set up with. Uh, and I'll tell you ahead of time, I've already uh, got the set up pretty close. But what we'll do is come in I've got the compound retracted back. I'm going to lock the carriage down now. This is going to be turning in this direction. I want the lathe, let's see, I think I want the, let me double check. Yeah, that's turning that way, so I want this coming opposite, so it'll be in forward. And I've got the chuck slowed down pretty good now. And yeah, you're correct. I need to have this in reverse. Okay. That'll just give a little more contact. We'll come in just a couple more thousand. And I'm literally only going in two thousandths at a time here. real good. Let me pull that out. I'm not getting any bogged down at all. It's got plenty of power. We got a, maybe I can get this where you can see it. But we got a good clean point on there. Now this center punch, it is extremely dull. So it's probably going to take several passes on it. But these being six-sided, we could easily hold them in our chuck. All right, I'm going to lock it down right there. And again, I'm going to have to make several passes to get a point on that. Alright, as you can obviously see, there's run out in this punch right here. That's not a big deal at all. Uh, it's, it's a center punch. It's meant to be held by hand. And good chance the last time it was ground, it was not dead center. It may not be dead center now in this chuck. Uh, but it's, it's going to work fine as a center punch. A handheld center punch.
got a good center on this punch again. Okay, I've got one more center punch that I want to grind while I'm set up at the 90 degree angle. That's this small one. It's not too bad, but it could stand to be dressed up again. But after we get this done, I'm going to show you how we're going to hold this MT3 taper uh, dead center. I've got two of these that need dressing up. Alright, I'm going to get set up now. What I'm going to do is take the chuck off. We're not going to try to hold these with the chuck. I'll bring you right back. Okay, I've got the chuck off of the lathe now. And this, the bore in this lathe, and I guess that's the case probably in every lathe. I'm not that familiar uh, with commercial lathes or even other uh, benchtop lathes. But this one is a large bore lathe, and it's tapered for an MT5. Now this is an MT5 to MT3 uh, adapter. So we'll carry that in. Now we'll take our MT3 dead center. That needs a little dress up down here. And hold that in place. Now, hopefully we won't see a lot of run out in this. Now, that looks really good up here. But down here on this end, like I say, it really needs dressing up. I've got the compound set now at 30 degrees. This is a 60 degree included angle on these dead centers. Right, I can see my angle is off just a little bit there. The protractor on my uh, compound is is graduated on the other side, and so I'm having to kind of guess at this to begin with. But if we just strike it at the uh, with either this leading edge or the trailing edge of the compound or of the grinding wheel, we should be okay with it. All right. I'd love to keep it as close to a 60 degree angle as I can. Folks, I'm still not satisfied with that angle. I'll bring you back in just a second when I get this set up a little closer. All right, I think we're closer now. And what I'm going for is clean up this, uh, uh, the point in in particular down here. I think you guys get the idea now of what this is used for or what I plan to use it for. As I said in the beginning of the first uh, video in this two-part series, this is not going to be a every day, every week, every month uh, tool that I'll use. It's going to be probably closer to once or twice a year 
just to clean up the points on my center punches and my uh, uh, dead centers. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, this build, got a little something out of it. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.